First Corinthians chapter, one preacher said this. He said, conservative Christianity is, in a hodge, is a hodgepodge. We have Disneyland doctrine, tinker toy theology, Hollywood holiness, lollipop liberalism, and a mirage of miracles. Right. In many circles, Christ ceases to be the center of Christianity. And maybe it's time to say with Paul, as he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with the excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. Now, there's a lot of us can relate to verse number 1. Our speech may not be eloquent. Uh, our vocabulary may be limited, but I can speak yeah. with authority, amen, right. and boldness, the testimony of God. Why? Because I have it right here in front of me. The precious word of God. The word of God, it's a laver for my cleansing. It's a lamp unto my feet. It's a light unto my path. It's everything I need yeah. to live a life in a sinful world, amen. It's everything you need. We have the word of God. I can speak with authority the testimony of God because I have his word right here in front of me. Now, there was nothing attractive about Paul's speech right here in 1 Corinthians, although there could have been. Paul determined that he was going to speak in simplicity. Paul could have spoke, by the way, in Acts chapter number 17 and verse number 28, Paul quoted the Greek poets. Paul was no dummy. Paul was learned in the learning of his day, schooled at the University of Tarsus, set under the feet of Gamaliel, a noted rabbi. Paul was a very smart man, but he determined uh, he was going to preach Christ and him crucified, a simple gospel for a simple world. Amen? Amen. He said in 2 Corinthians chapter number 11, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. The gospel is simple, amen? amen. It's simple for simple-minded people like David Rowan, amen? amen? Thank God for the gospel. And because it was so simple, the results were overwhelming. People heard the gospel. They were converted and they were saved. Did you know that Paul said the preaching of the gospel to them that perish is foolish? Look at, um, look over here in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. Look at verse number 21. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that what? Believe. That believe. That belief. Now, Paul did not say he put up with foolish preaching. Yeah. He said it was a foolishness of preaching that God used to save them which are lost. If you'll notice while we're in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, and uh, look at verse number 27. God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the, the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and the base things of the world and things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. And why did he do it? Verse 29, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Thank God for the foolishness of preaching to save them which believe. Now you think about it. According to the world's standards, why in the world... After a tiring week, after working 40 hours last week, toiling and laboring, and you have Sundays off, why not just sleep in? Why would a group of people get up, get ready, shave, brush their teeth? Now, women, I'm not talking about you shaving, amen? I'm talking to the fellows. Shave and brush their teeth and get their clothes on and come to church and listen to a man get up here and rattle on for about 30 minutes, amen? Let me tell you why. Because it's the power of God. That's why. Amen. Amen. You understand. To us that are saved, it is the power of God. And I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God. Unto salvation, J.C., to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now what more would a preacher want to preach than the testimony of God? 
What a wonderful message that we have. It's a message, a message that works, and it works every time. Why? Because God had promised me back in Isaiah that his word would never return void. All we have to do is to pass on what God has given us. Amen? Yes, Preaching the gospel is not delivering edifying discourses beautifully put together, but bearing witness to what God has done in Christ for man's salvation. Simply passing on what he has delivered unto me. Amen? Now, if you'll notice, Paul excluded deliberately, not only from his preaching, but also from his knowledge, everything but that one central truth. Jesus Christ, both, is the power of God and the wisdom of God. The Bible said the Word was made flesh and dwelled among us. Jesus Christ is the very Word embodied. Amen? He's God incarnate. But the Bible said he is also the wisdom of God. If you'll notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 24. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is God's way of providing the answer to the deepest needs of the human soul. Any time that man tries to exalt man's wisdom above God's, there is always a division. Human wisdom never will provide what every man needs the most, and that is salvation. Never, never try to incorporate your plan with God's plan. That's what he means by the wisdom of God. Did you know there's a lot of people trying to incorporate their own plan? Now, during the conference, it was pretty prevalent that men were getting up and they were preaching and they were trying to help. I don't believe they were trying to destroy, trying to tear down, trying to confuse you, but the message was that you do not incorporate your plan with God's plan. It's the wisdom of God, and it's the foolishness of preaching that God has chosen to save them which are lost. And my dear friend, a person is born into the family of God when he believes yeah. the record of God. Amen. It's not when he does something. Right. Now, most of us would stand up and say that we understand that a man is not born in the family of God by the Milton City water system. We understand that. We understand it's the blood of Christ amen. that washes away every yeah. sin. We understand. And everybody would amen. Pretty much you would. Amen. You're not saved by going by the Ten Commandments. Yeah. You found out a long time ago you can't keep the law. Amen. You're not saved by the law. But when we start meddling with Baptist tradition, it seems like that that's when you get your rebuke. That's when you get that that's when you get the static. That's when it the, the, it's like rubbing two pieces yeah. of sandpaper. Yeah. We understand that. Brother Paul mentioned in Sunday school, and it wasn't to hurt you, it was to help you. Brother Paul mentioned in Sunday school, if you think you have to repeat a sinner's prayer to get to heaven, you missed it. Yeah. Right. Now, we're, we're, we're not against prayer. Prayer is right. I was praying when I got saved. Yeah. I was thanking God for the goodness of God. But I understand it was not that prayer that saved me. Amen? Amen. It wasn't. It was the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and his death on Calvary that satisfied a holy God. It was not something that came from me right. to God. Yeah. It was what God came from heaven to do for me. Amen. Amen. 2,000 years ago on the yeah. cross of Calvary. Good for Hold your place there. Let's go over to Romans chapter number 3. <laughs> Romans chapter number 3. You see, the Bible tells us that there's a way, it says it in Proverbs chapter 14 and also Proverbs 16, there's a way that seemeth right to a man at the end there of the ways of death. We do not incorporate our plan into God's plan. That's what Paul is telling us in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 about the power of God and the wisdom of God.
God. In Romans chapter number 3, look at verse number 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, listen to this now, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all. Stop right there. Yeah. Unto all. Every man, past, present, and future, is included in this all. Amen. What Jesus did on Calvary's cross is sufficient, sufficient, yeah. to get every man to heaven. Every man and woman can go to heaven based on what Christ can do, what Christ did do. Amen on Calvary's cross. But if you'll notice that, yeah. it says not only unto all, but it says what else? Upon. Upon all them that what? Jesus. Stop right there. Yeah. What else is there to it? That's it. That's it. It because the work of Christ and his blood and what he did is sufficient to carry every man to heaven. Amen. But it becomes effective when you believe. Yes, right. It becomes mine. Amen. You see? Everything necessary for me to go to heaven, Christ did for me. Did you know according to 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 19, that God reconciled the world unto himself? How did he do it? Through Christ. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. And hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. God did not impute J.C.'s sins into him. No. Right. And if you want to know about J.C., you can get with him after the service. Amen? Yeah. I can tell you all about it. He can tell you all about it. <laughs> he, he, there's no problem in J.C. or myself recognizing I'm a sinner. Amen. But I realized that if God had imputed my sins yeah. to me, yeah. if he would have laid my sins to my account, then I would have been doomed and damned for eternity. Yeah, that's right. But he took all of my sins and laid them to Christ's account. Here's the view. Here's the simplicity. God judged Christ yeah. for David Rowe. Go ahead. I deserve the beating. Yeah, I did. But he beat Christ. Christ died and rose again the third day. And God Almighty, the creator of the universe, looks at me and says, I'm fixed. Yeah, amen. amen. Said, I'm good. And I can go to heaven. Amen. Yeah. Because of what Christ does. Did you know according to Colossians chapter number 1 verse number 20. That Christ made peace with God for you. Mm -hmm. and I've heard people say I've made my peace with God. And I understand where you're, I understand where you're going. So I'm not going to hammer on that. I'm not going to say you're wrong by saying that. But in reality. Christ made your peace with God. Amen. Why? Because you don't have anything to offer God. Amen. You're a sinner, unrighteous, unholy, ungodly, according to the book of Jude. Christ is holy and righteous and godly. Amen. Therefore, the Lamb without blemish took all of my sin. And when God judged Christ, that enmity was taken out of the way. That middle wall of partition was taken out of the way. All of the ordinances and handwritings that was against us was taken out of the way. Between God and myself. Amen. Now you see how it's unto all and how it became upon all. Uh -huh. About 2.30, one morning up in Crossville, Tennessee, laying in my bed, I realized that I was lost and going to hell. Mm. But you know what I realized that very next second? Is I don't have to go to hell. Amen. Amen. I don't have, based on what Christ has done for me, and how did that come? That came by a collection of knowledge. In the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you're not saved by knowledge, but you're not saved apart from knowledge. Y'all right. agree with that? Yep. Yes, <sighs> Good preacher. <laughs> Glory to God. You go ahead. Just keep on. For you. Anybody that knows me knows it's not put on. I got one lung for you new people. <laughs> I got one lung, but that one gets fired up, it's ready to go. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. All right, go over here on uh, Galatians. Let's go to Galatians. 
Galatians chapter number 6. Now, remember what I said. You're not saved by knowledge, but you're not saved apart from knowledge. That's why that, that this church is so adamantly against putting our wisdom in with God's wisdom and formulating our own plans and trying to mix them in with God's plans. We, we have been, anyone that's been in the Baptist church for, for, for a number of years knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I had a fellow not too long ago tell me he went in a um, little, like a Tom Thumb. They don't have Tom Thumbs up in Tennessee, but like a 7-Eleven or something. He went in there and he purposed in his heart he was going to win one soul a day. That's what he purposed. And by the way, that's what we're taught in a lot of our fundamental services. Yes, sir. Aggressive soul winners. He was going to win one soul a day, so he walks in this little convenience store. He sees a fella in the aisle, and he goes over some quick verses with him, and then points to another verse and says this. All you have to do is do this. And you'll be saved. So the fella did that. And in, in his testimony, this preacher said, I walked out of the, of the convenience store praising the Lord. There was another soul added to the family of God. Mm -hmm. Now, you know what? I don't know if that soul was added to the family of God, but I do know this. If that's, if that's all that fella had, then he didn't get it. Yeah. Based upon what that preacher said. That's why we're against that short term plan that we have manufactured. It's not because we're against um, a, a people. We're, we're against, we're, we're against yeah. false preaching. Yeah. We're against untruth. Yeah. And so that person has to have a knowledge. In other words, it starts according, I think Brother Paul, did you bring out John 1-9 this morning? Yes. John 1-9 that Jesus has lighted every man that comes into the world. Mm -hmm. Now I believe that verse. Yeah. I believe that man is born just like Jesus said, he has life. I believe that the book of Romans says that God has given a measure of grace to e everyone. Not just to any individual, but everyone. Now what we need to do is we need to act upon that light. And if we act upon that light in a positive way, what is God going to do? He's going to give you more light. Galatians, are you in Galatians 3? <laughs> Verse number 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth. That shall he also reap. That's the law of God. That's the law of the heart. Whatsoever a man sows, that is what he's going to reap. Now let's go over here. Just follow along with me. And let me take you to several portions of Scripture. Luke chapter number 6. Luke chapter number 6. Now we're, we're, we're talking about the principle of sowing and reaping. We're talking about the law of the harvest. The Bible says in Luke chapter number 6, verse number 38, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom, for with the same measure, here, notice this last part, for with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall that he also reap. Whatever you give, I said, I'll give it back. You see that? Look at Matthew chapter 7. Follow along with me. I'm not going to go fast. Matthew chapter number 7. And uh, look at verse number 2. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 2. I want you to get this principle fixed in your mind. Did you know the Bible says in Romans chapter number 12, verse number 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed how? That's it right there. You see, there's a whole lot of people still out here in the world today thinks God's mad at them. But God got mad at Christ 2,000 years ago and said, you can go to heaven. Yeah. Amen. God's not, going to, God's not waiting for you to mess up so he can sack you. Yeah. Amen. That's right. God is, God is waiting for you to get what you need right here that you can say, yes, I believe. Look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 2. For with what judgment you judge, ye shall be judged. And notice, underline this last part. 
with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. It's the law of, law of the heart. Uh, look at Matthew chapter number 8, verse number 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. There's two words right there, as and so. As thou hast believed, what? You believe that verse? I know you do. I, I'm just getting you to concentrate just a minute. As thou hast believed, so be it done unto you. That's the law of the heart of sowing and reaping. What I want is what I'll do. Do I really want to know how to go to heaven? There, there may be some here today that's comfortable in religion and people have said things today to upset your comfort zone and to get you to look at the Word of God. What you really want is what you're going to get. If you want to go to heaven, you can go to heaven. Why? Because the Bible tells me in the 50th Psalm in verse number 23 that if I order my conversation right, that God will do what? He will show me his salvation. So I begin to I begin to act upon that light that God has given me, and God is revealing more and more to me. Amen? Now let me go somewhere else. Chapter number nine. Matthew chapter number nine, verse two. Matthew chapter number nine. Then touched he their eyes, saying, what is that phrase, according to your faith, be it unto you? Hallelujah. Isn't that the same principle of so and yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Same what, what you want is what you'll get. Yeah. Okay? All right, let's look at Mark chapter number 4, verse 24. I'm going, I'm going slow, so you can go with me. Mark chapter number 4, verse 24. Now, here it gets a little bit more detailed. Mark chapter 4, verse 24. And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear, what's going to happen? More shall be given. To you that respond to truth, more truth will be given. Did you know I went, through, I went through Bible college and I didn't find out until I was a 25-year-old man that Jesus was God. I said, praise the Lord. Well, the doubts of my nine-year-old profession started haunting me, so I got on my knees and said, Lord, if I wasn't saved, so yeah, yeah, right. that's what I said. Yeah. And I got up pretty well satisfied, pretty, pretty satisfied, generally satisfied. So I learned that truth. Did you know later on, and raised, raised in an Armenian environment, Armenian environment means, uh, uh, this, this one point I'll give you, people in Armenian, uh, with Armenian theology think you can lose your salvation. I, I learned another truth when I was 25. I learned that I was saved forever. Yeah. And so I kept going back to that nine-year-old profession, and I said, Lord, if I'm not saved, save me now. Yeah. And so I got up. I was good for a little while. And then I would learn another truth. So, you see, it doesn't bother me. And, and I know I'm on YouTube and I'm on tape. And preachers are going to throw rocks at me for saying it. That's all right. But it really doesn't bother me how many professions people make. That's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what it tells me when they make a profession? They're, They're adding to their faith. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because I, I, I dare say that there's probably, uh, especially an adult my age, there, there's no one here today that had to make several of them. Several professions. You say, I didn't get it. But some of you are still trying to suppress it and not going to tell anybody because you think people will point their finger at you and, 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 and say you're, you know, just call your name. Well, I'm here to tell you you're at the right place right here for people to rejoice. Yeah. Because there's, if, if you'll get honest, there's not a soul here that's made several of them. Or got on their knees at least and said, if I'm not saved, save me now. Yes, sir. Yeah, if I didn't get saved back then, save me now. So the truth is coming, and the truth is the truth is there. God is giving you more truth. Let's go to one more. Let's go to Luke chapter number 8, verse 18. 
Luke chapter number 8, verse number 18. And it even adds something here in this verse that may wake you up a little bit. Take heed therefore how we hear. Yes. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. And whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken. Notice this last phrase. Even that which he seemeth yeah. to have. Mm -hmm. You see, there's some people in churches today sitting in the pews that have a false light. Brother Dewey, years ago, preached a sermon that's always... Uh, brother, you say things every once in a while that sticks with it. You preached on moon curses. Moon, anyone that, that, that ever grew up around the coast, and uh, especially up in Maine, and, and uh, down through the Carolinas and so forth. And there, these these false uh, these pirates would get lights and they would they would shine the light so that the ship, thinking it to be the lighthouse, yeah. would come in and they would get stuck or run aground or crash, and then the pirates could loot that ship. Did you know that there's false light going out? Yeah. There is Satan, is trying, he appears as an angel of what? Light. Angel of light. Yeah. He's trying to get you to run aground and trying to get you, he's deviating you off of that straight course to the lighthouse who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, good preacher. And so we need to stay on track. Now, I'm going to read you one more. Oh, let's go over here to uh, Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter number 21. Now, Paul, when he's talking about the wisdom of God, he's talking about not mixing our plan in with God's plan. Now, either God means what he says, or this is just a collection of man's thoughts. Either he really means what he says, when he says the only way that a person can be born into his family is to believe the work of redemption absolutely fulfilled God's plan. The work that Jesus Christ did on Calvary. That's, that, that's what we have to believe. We don't add to it. We don't add, we don't add a collection of words. We don't add water baptism. We don't add anything to God's plan. And when we begin to search the word, God knows our hearts. He knows that we're looking for light and truth. And God begins to give us truth. Now look at, look at Matthew 21. I use this a lot. Let me go over here. Matthew chapter number 21, verse number 23. And when he was coming to the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him, unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority, authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. If you'll tell me, Jesus said, I'll tell you. And then the Lord asked the question. He said, the baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did you not then believe him? But if we shall say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. It's not that Jesus did not want to tell them. It's because they did not accept the first light yeah. that God gave them, which was the message of John the Baptist. Right. Yeah. Hold on. Yep. If you will accept the light you have, and God has lighted every man, and when we get in the Word of God, creation itself, our own conscience bears witness to the fact that we need a Savior. Amen. We begin to act upon that light. God gives us more light. 
finally, here it is. It's all together. It's all in one big picture now. It's like a painting of Brother, Brother Bernie. Did you know how when he turns those lights uh, a different way that that picture comes into focus? It's the same way with you searching for the Lord Jesus Christ. When you keep searching, seek Him while He may be found. If you seek Him with all of your heart, Jeremiah 29, 13 says you will find Him. And then it all comes into focus. And then you see that, 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 that veil is gone. That, that, that veil that was upon the face of Moses, it's gone. And we can see the glory. We can see that Jesus Christ is the only way. When that picture comes together, there's, there's no need to get out and confess all of my sins. There's no need to say a repeated prayer. There is no need to get baptized in water. Now, we do that as a step of obedience, but not for salvation. Right. All right? You see that? There is no need for works. I believe it. Yeah. Because God showed it to me. And you know what? When God shows you truth, I promise you this. You'll always know what truth is not. Uh -huh. Amen. And there's not, there's nothing on the face of this earth or in heaven that can ever make you doubt. Right, that's Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, I, that's as far as I'm going to go. Oh, come on, Amen. Right. I got a lot more. Let's stand to our feet, please, if you will. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you, dear Lord. Paul determined in his heart that he was going to preach Christ and be crucified. Mm. I pray, dear Lord, that through the message today, folks were, you know, were listening, eyes were open, hearts were open, dear God. And that soul that's nearest eternity may receive you before it's eternally too late. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.